Hi again, everybody. Uh, for this video, we're going to actually discuss what it means for two segments to be congruent. So if you look at our target over here, we've got, uh, we want you to be able to use segment postulates to identify congruent segments. So all the things we did in the other videos, we're going to be able to use to determine if two figures, are, excuse me, in this case, two segments are actually congruent. So what does that mean? Well, congruent really is kind of like equals. All right, and I say kind of like equals because we're sort of living in two different worlds here. We have like a numerical world and then we have like a geometric sort of figure kind of world. So numerically equals literally means exactly what you always thought it meant. It's when two like numbers are the same. So if AB was five and CD was five, we say they have equal measures, five equals five. Those are numbers. This one is really talking about the figure. And if you remember, the figure with the symbol up here like this is a segment. So this is actually saying segment AB and segment CD are geometrically equal. And instead of saying equal, we use the term congruent. So this is basically, if you read this out loud, it would be segment AB is congruent to segment CD. Not to be confused with the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from C to D. So I know, I know what you're thinking because I thought the same thing. They basically mean the same thing. It's just this one is numerical, so these are gonna be where you have actual values and numbers, and this is gonna be uh, sort of figures geometrically, like just pure geometric figures. In this case, we're really just dealing with segments, but it'll eventually be for other figures too, like triangles and you know hexagons and any, any other shape you can think of could be congruent, okay? All right, so that's essentially the difference between equal and congruent, and congruent is sort of the end result that we're looking for uh, geometrically. So what does that look like? How, do, how does that work in a, an actual problem? So in this example, they're actually telling you to determine if A, B, and C, D are in fact congruent. Segments A, B, segments C, D, are they congruent? So we need to actually find that distance. Well, if you remember earlier when we used the ruler postulate, we were able to find the distance from a point to another point by simply subtracting the x values. Or, excuse me, I, I kind of gave it away. The, the values that are different. Notice this is going from negative 1, 7 over to 3, 7. So it's not going up or down. There's no rise here. It's only run. So how much is it running, if you will? So this is exactly like what we did before with the x coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead and say the distance from A to B is going to be the absolute value of the difference of those x coordinates. You could almost think of this as like x1 and x2. Same thing from before. So this would be 3 minus a negative 1, which ends up just being 4. So the distance from A to B is simply 4. If you're more of a visual person and you want to kind of just count 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 and kind of get a visual there, that's fine. But, but really, you should be able to do it this way too because all you're really doing is subtracting. If you bring it the other way and you do negative 1 minus 3, you're going to get negative 4. But since it's absolute value, you're still going to get 4. Okay? So... AB equals 4. How about the vertical segment? Well, to be honest, there's really no difference of doing it like this or even just rotating it and doing the exact same thing we just did. The difference is when you rotate it, this is sort of like the x-axis now, but instead we're actually using y values. So if you're comfortable with your coordinate system, this, this is a way you could look at it. If you're not as comfortable, you can go another route. You can simply just subtract the values that are different. But that's only going to work if it's horizontal or vertical. There's another trick to use, another theorem actually, um, if, it, if it goes like diagonally. All right, so for CD, uh, let's see, it's in the little room here. Let's go over here. CD is going to be the absolute value of 5 minus, 5 minus 1. 5 minus 1, which is 4. So the actual value of CD is 4. The actual value of AB is 4. So I could conclude AB must equal CD because 4 equals 4. Therefore, segment AB must be congruent to segment CD. That's sort of how it works. So because of this, I get this. All right, or you can, in other words, you can say these are congruent because AB is equal to CD, right? Four equals four, of course, you know, if you, if you just wanna hammer that home. So congruency is just the geometric way of displaying 
that two figures in fact have the same measurement. And that's essentially how you show two things are congruent, two segments are congruent. Hopefully that'll help. Again, if you have any questions, please be sure and ask, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.